The Pokemon Global Link has put out an update with a stricter hack check, specifically meant to keep out cyber save Pokemon and Pokemon with illegal attributes out of the battle spot servers, not only because of course they are inherently unfair and tend to be grossly overpowered, but also because they are notorious for corrupting the save files of any player who interacts with these Pokemon. And although this update does not specifically target power save, genning, or action replay, it has certainly re-sparked the debate about those devices as well, as well as what is and isn't cheating in competitive Pokemon. I suppose I will begin by saying that I like this update. I don't like seeing Pokemon like an already mega evolved Charizard X with 999 attack, 999 HP, and so on so forth. So this is Pokemon with illegal attributes and therefore an unfair advantage in the context of a battle. The discussion that has been sparked by this update is not even necessarily about what the update does itself because the update does nothing, absolutely nothing to, to disrupt power savers, geners, and users of action replay. It really only disrupts those which make hard edits to the save file such as the Japanese cyber save which is known to make the crazier hacks like the Charizard that I mentioned earlier or for example <laughs> Wonder Tomb being a very classic example of making an unobtainable Pokemon. Throughout the generations, Game Freak has made very little progress, completely eliminating Pokemon that have been engineered from a third party device, mostly because within competitive communities, especially those that play popular yet unofficial formats such as Smogon, the majority of Pokemon that are genned or hacked are engineered and developed to look indistinguishable from a Pokemon that is bred, both in terms of obtainable stats, moves, or abilities, in order to make a Pokemon that can technically be obtainable in the game within a matter of minutes rather than hours. By far the most divisive question among both competitive and casual Pokemon players is regarding the legitimacy of hacked or gen Pokemon that are technically obtainable in the game and are engineered within the legal parameters of what you can obtain in the game. Many are of the opinion that changing your game or modifying it with any external device or any purpose is fundamentally cheating and it does affect the competitive spirit of the game. This cut and dry definition of cheating with external devices tends to be very straightforward when it comes to games that are centered around the single player experience. Take Final Fantasy example, where if you use an action replay you can max out all of your character's stats from the very beginning and just plow through the game and basically break the experience. But ultimately that, that cheating is only weighing on your conscience and nobody else, unlike the cyber save and illegal attributes that are given to Pokemon with hard edits that are currently being cracked down by Game Freak and I agree with that aspect of this discussion. However, when it comes to games like Pokemon that are mostly centered around the multiplayer experience, I personally believe there is a more nuanced debate to be had about whether all third party modifications give you an unfair advantage in the context of the competitive battle. For example, in the context of an online competitive battle, the fact that you may have power saved to obtain 9,000 Master Balls or 9,000 Rare Candies to plow through the in-game experience has no bearing on the outcome of the competitive battle. One of the more popular points brought up by people who are against hacked or gened Pokemon that fit within the legal parameters of the game is that the time saved by generating or creating a Pokemon with an external device or program gives you an unfair advantage over players who have bred for their 6 IV Pokemon. However, in my personal opinion, that is a very fallacious argument because that's basically saying that saving time in getting your team together or obtaining your competitive Pokemon equals 
cheating when there are so many other time-saving measures available to competitive players that have nothing to do with actually tampering with the save file. For example, a lot of the top VGC players actually have other people breed for them. That's actually how the mishap with the Dream World Asia Slash, do you remember that with Ray Rizzo? How there was a huge controversy about that. Well, he wasn't the one who actually bred and obtained that Aegis Slash. He um, had someone else, one of his friends, do it for him. And I suppose she was involved with uh, external devices and she kind of screwed up there. We also have Pokemon simulators online, such as Pokemon Showdown, where we can build teams within a matter of minutes and test them to see if they're good rather than having to take the time to breed these Pokemon and then just find out that they don't work on battle spot. So technically that is saving time because we can work out any team that we want until we, we have the exact formula on Pokemon Showdown that works for us and then we go onto the game cartridge and breed one time rather than doing a trial and error process that could take hours if you're just playing on the DS and you do not use simulators at all. There are websites out there where you can actually buy battle ready Pokemon. Now I don't endorse or prefer this method at all and for the sake of the discussion let's say that neither the buyer or the seller is using any third party devices but basically somebody who has a little bit of money to burn can buy a team that would take a quote unquote ordinary player hours to breed so is that cheating? So I suppose the point that I'm trying to get across is that saying that saving time using external devices is cheating opens up this slippery slope fallacy where every other method of saving time is cheating unless you are taking the time, the hours, to breed your Pokemon. Otherwise it gives you an unfair advantage. So um, I'll use an example of when I was trying to get into Battle Spot a few months earlier. And um, first of all, well, I was already using Showdown to test teams, and then when I finally had my set team that I wanted to actually breed on Cartridge, I only had to breed like three of them, and for the rest, I asked my friend Daniel if he had any spares of um, Pokemon that he bred. I remember he, um, I don't know the exact Pokemon that he traded me, but I ended up obtaining three Pokemon from him, and in the end, that saved me a lot of time because... Um, I mean, isn't that giving me an unfair advantage over somebody who had to breed all six of their Pokemon? If first of all, I only bred three, I avoided breeding many more because I was testing teams on Showdown. So in the end, discussing cheating in competitive Pokemon I think is a lot like <laughs> discussing Dragon Ball Z canon. Everyone has their own version, it's not black and white, nobody will ever agree, and unfortunately some will put others down for their opinions on this. As far as my own standard of what cheating is in competitive Pokemon, and my personal opinion on it, I believe that cheating in competitive Pokemon is when one player has an unfair advantage over the other in the context of an actual battle. So that goes back to what I was saying before about how if you cheated to get 9,000 rare candies or 9,000 master balls, that doesn't matter when you're in a competitive battle. If there is the potential to rob the more skilled player of the victory, then it is inherently an unfair element. And this kind of ties into a lot of Smogon policies about certain moves or Pokemon that give players an unfair advantage and um, are not displays of skill. This is very similar. And so I just discussed how the saving time argument is something that is... Uh, in, is an argument that is inherently fallacious. So that would mean that an unfair advantage um, regarding tampering with your save file, it would have to be an unfair advantage that is clearly visible in the context of a battle. That would be illegal stats, abilities, moved, or simply banned Pokemon in the format. Like, say you're playing, you were playing VGC 14 and you were using Breloom, which um, was illegal in that format. So as long as the player doesn't use Pokemon that have illegal attributes or that are banned in the format, then it simply doesn't matter how they obtain the Pokemon or how many they gen, how many they got from another person, how many they power saved, they will not win because of that. 
they will not win unless they are actually better at the game than their opponent. And I suppose the one thing that really bothers me from some of the more purest players on this issue, again some, so I'm not just painting with a broad brush here, is that if you are legitimately concerned about the integrity of online play and just the spirit of competitive Pokemon as a whole, and that's why you're against all third-party devices, all editing of save files, then then great, that is generally not an opinion that I will find fault with. However, if your ulterior motive is to just find any reason to discredit competitive players of victories because you yourself feel insecure about your skill at the game, that's what really gets under my skin. Perhaps players who are less experienced and therefore lose more often that they just want to find any excuse to attack the person who beat them, including the possible use of Pokemon that were hacked but have legal and obtainable attributes. Go ahead and feel free to comment your opinion about both the Global Link update and the overall discussion about cheating and competitive Pokemon in the comment section below. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a like, maybe subscribe, and also tell me what you want me to talk about next.